Hey everyone, Howard Pinsky here from Ice Flow Studios, still recovering from surgery, so if I sound a little bit strange, I apologize. But after seeing the Iron Man 3 trailer just a few days ago, I had to sit down and make some sort of Iron Man related design. So today, we're going to be making an Iron Man inspired text effect in Photoshop. Let's get started. Starting off with the size of my document, I usually start around 1280 by 720 but as I might want to use this design for a wallpaper in the future, I'm going to start big this time. I'm going to go for 1920 by 1080 full HD for this design. Of course, you can start at any size that you like, but keep in mind that if you choose to start at a smaller size, you may have to adjust the layer styles as we're going through this video. Good, so now that the document is ready to go, you can either fill the background with completely black or you can use a dark texture. I'm going to go ahead and grab this texture here which I found over at Shutterstock.com and simply reduce the opacity to around 30% and change the blend mode to hard light. That will give it a really nice effect against the black background. Now if you don't have a subscription to Shutterstock, you can always go to a website like CGTextures.com. They have a nice selection of free textures that you can use. Alright, so now that the background is in place, let's move on to the text. As for the font, I found a great Iron Man style font over at DaFont.com, which is where I get most of my fonts from. The font is called CGF Arch Reactor. If you're watching this on IceFlowStudios.com, I will put a link to that font directly in the article. Of course, you can use any font that you wish, but a nice thick font usually works best for these types of designs. Now there are going to be two text layers that make up this design, one for the foreground and one which will give the text a little bit of depth. Both will be the exact same size and shape. Because I'm working with a really large document, I also want to work with a really large font. So I'm going to use around 235 and I'm going to type out my word of choice right in the center of the document. To make things simple, I'll use Iron Man. Now as for the color of the text, which you could set either before or after you typed it out, I'm going to be using a very dark red. The value is going to be 251103. This will actually act as the background text, the text that will give the text some depth, but we'll get to that in a moment. So now that we have our first type layer created, you're going to want to perform a simple duplication. This will leave you with two identical layers right on top of each other. You can easily do this with the Command or Control J shortcut. Command on the Mac, Control on Windows. Good, and as you can see in our layers panel on the right, we have two of the exact same layers. And for the top layer, we now want to go and add some layer styles. You can easily do that by double clicking on the layer to bring up the layer styles dialog box. We're going to start with a gradient overlay. Once you're in the gradient overlay section, we're not going to worry about any of the settings right here. We're going to click on the gradient bar to bring up the gradient editor so we can edit the colors. Now the color on the left is going to be a little bit lighter red. I'm going to use the value 541313. Now the color on the right is going to be quite a bit darker. The value I'm going to use is 260404. Perfect. Now that the gradient is finished, we're going to hop into the bevel and emboss section. This will give us a nice outline around our text. We're going to keep the style at inner bevel, but I'm going to change the technique to chisel hard. And then I'm going to set the depth at 300, keep the direction at up, and increase the size to 13. Now again, I will mention that if you're using a larger or smaller font, you will have to tweak these settings to get the result that you're looking for. Now down below under shading, I'm going to keep the angle at 120, but I'm going to increase the altitude to around 50 degrees. And I also want to turn on anti-aliased. This will ensure that the edges of our text are nice and smooth and not sharp. Finally, we're going to make some changes to the highlight and shadow mode. We're actually going to switch it up a little bit. For the highlight mode, I'm going to set the blend mode at color burn and set the color to a dark brown. The value is going to be 513311D and the opacity can stay at 75%. Now for the shadow mode, I'm going to set the blend mode at screen and use a nice peach color, FFCB87. Perfect. The last thing we're going to add is a contour to our bevel. Right on the left hand side we can add a contour and when we click on the contour picker I'm going to add the rounded steps contour. And based on your personal preference you can decrease the range if necessary. I'm going to bump it down to around 35%. Perfect. So those layer styles gave us a really nice border around our text but there's still a little bit of work to be done. Let's go ahead and hop down a layer to our original type layer. This one's going to be simple. First off, it needs to be revealed. Right now it's hiding behind the top layer that we just worked on. 
If you still have the top layer selected, simply move it upwards until the bottom layer is poking out from the bottom. If the bottom layer is selected, just move it down. And depending on the color of the background, it may be a little bit difficult to see this text, so you either can change the color of the text or add a drop shadow. Let's go ahead and add a drop shadow. We're going to double click on that layer to open up our layer styles dialog box and select the drop shadow option. In here, I'm going to keep the blend mode at multiply, but I'm going to increase the opacity all the way up to 100%, set the angle at 90 degrees, set the distance at 5, and increase the size to around 20. That should give you a nice drop shadow that pulls our design away from the background just a little bit. Good, so now that we have the text completed, let's move on to the textures to really bring this design home. For a design like this, a scratched metal texture is going to work great. Again, I'm going to be using a texture that I found over at Shutterstock.com. Now when you have your texture opened in Photoshop, you can simply drag it up to the tab at the top, hold it there for a second, and then drop it right on top of your document. And if you have to, you can always resize it to fit over the text. So now that the texture is in place, we need to create a layer mask to hide everything outside of the text. In your Layers panel, hold down your Command key on the Mac, Control key on Windows, and click on the Top Type Layers thumbnail. This will turn that Top Type layer into a selection. And then once the selection has been made, click on the Add Layer Mask icon at the bottom of your Layers panel to hide everything outside of that selection. Good, now obviously we're not going to keep it like this. We need to blend it with the text a little bit. To do this, you can change the blend mode of that texture layer to soft light and then decrease the opacity as needed. I'm going to set it around 60%. Now if your texture is lighter or darker, you may want to experiment with the other blend modes that are available to get the best blend. Good, that's looking a lot better. Let's go ahead and add a few finishing touches to really finalize this design. I'm going to start with a single spotlight at the top of this design. As you don't want to mess up your texture layer and you can't brush on a type layer, you want to make sure to create a new layer in your layers panel specifically for this light. Now once that new layer has been created, go ahead and grab your brush tool with the B key on your keyboard and make sure your color is set to white. Once that's done, right click anywhere in your document to bring up the brush picker and make sure you have a very soft, large brush. At any time you want to increase the size of that brush without bringing up the brush picker, you can always use the right square bracket key on your keyboard. And once you have a nice sized brush, simply click once on your document to create that light. Now to finish it off, back in your layers panel, change the blend mode of that light to either soft light or overlay. Good, we're going to add one more element to finish off this design. We're going to add a shine on top of our text. Back in your layers panel, go ahead and create another new layer right on top of your text layer and then turn that type layer into a selection just like you did before. Command or control and click on the type layer's thumbnail. Now once your selection has been made, we want to fill it with white. A quick way to do this is to press the D key on your keyboard to set your default colors. Black will be the foreground color and white will be the background color. And then you can use command delete on the Mac or control backspace on Windows to fill your selection with the background color, which happens to be white. And then once that's done, Command or Control D will deselect your selection. Now you need to decide which part of the shine layer you want visible. With your selection method of choice active, in this case I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool, you want to box out what you want to keep. I'm going to select a diagonal area of the top portion of my text. And when that selection is complete, go ahead and click the Add Layer Mask icon in your Layers panel to hide the area outside of the selection. Good, now if you want the shine to fade off towards the left or the right, you can use a black to transparent gradient on the layer mask to do so. Go ahead and grab your gradient tool from the tools bar on the left, and then at the top choose the foreground to transparent gradient, and then drag out a gradient from the end of the shine that you want transparent to the end that you want visible. Now if you find yourself in a situation where black covers the whole entire document, make sure that the layer mask is selected in your layers panel. And finally, once your layer mask has been finalized, go ahead and set the blend mode of that layer to soft light and decrease the opacity as needed. And that should do it, your own Iron Man text in Photoshop. If you want to check out more Photoshop tutorials just like this, make sure to check out my website, iceflowstudios.com, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Take care.